Okay. So this is the third video and also the last video that you'll see from me in like a very long while. Actually, it might not be. I might make videos every Tuesday, maybe depending. But look, the reason why I'm making these videos, you know, I, I, I needed to watch a few training debates. See, usually in all of my tier lists, you'll notice that all of the ones that I've been posting, I've had training in tier one. I've had training in tier two. But if you actually asked me why is training in tier one, I'd say he beat Seth. And then if you asked me why is Seth good, I wouldn't be able to give you an answer, really, truly, and honestly. Now, look. I think that the reason why people used to think Trini was good is simply because of the fact that Trini knew a little bit of philosophy, he knew a little bit about logic, and he also knew a little bit about some certain like um, philosophical topics. And because of that, then you see people get stun locked. People get these sort of illusions of grandeur that oh, this guy he he knows a lot of philosophy in a community where quite really nobody knew anything about philosophy. Nobody knew like what a valid argument was. Whereas Trini was quite literally a one of the first people who knew what a valid argument was in terms of the fiction community. So people really looked up to Trini. People thought Trini was really good. People thought Trini was really, really smart, really, really intelligent. But as you look back on it and you look back on Trini's skill, you notice that Trini isn't actually very good. He isn't actually really competent. So to start off with, we'll talk about his debate with Draco. In his debate against Draco, which a wide variety of people seem to think that Draco won. And I'm one of those people. In the very, very beginning, Draco brings up a very, very simple argument that Naruto beats this character who is known as the strongest at the time. Therefore, Naruto is now the new strongest, right? Because he beats the guy who was the strongest at the time. And Trini's refutation is something that is so bad that it actually leaves me in awe. And I was actually so surprised. See, I had some form of, you know, hinting and inkling that Trini wasn't good. When I heard he lost to Era, then I had another inkling that Trini wasn't good. When I heard the arguments that he was making against um against Para, now some of the more notorious things was well one he had <laughs> he was like well I think therefore I am proves things exist outside of your mind because your mind has to be existing somewhere. So again, obvious things like that, you know, where clearly he's completely confused about the topic. They gave me a little inkling that he was bad, you know, but then against Draco, this really took the cake for me, right? Against Draco, his response to the argument that I laid out from Draco, his sort of response was, well, uh, if Trin, if uh, if he, he if he lost the fight, then he can't be the strongest. Him losing the fight is a contradiction to him being the strongest at the time. And it's like, well, no, that isn't how that works. Because if I say, and Draco brought up a perfect analogy that displayed this. If I say I'm the fastest man alive, and then after I die, someone becomes fat. Oh, no, no, no. After I die. Also, actually, no, no, no. It, it refers it like this. I say I'm the fastest man alive, right? And then someone new is born. And then they become faster than me. Now, at the moment in which I made this statement, I am the fastest man alive. So I'm the fastest man alive now. However, the baby wasn't alive then, so it wasn't included in the statement, right? So when the baby becomes alive, becomes a human, now he runs and he's now faster than me. Now you'll notice that, oh, well, now well, there's no real contradiction. It's just like world records, you know, world records are broken. That doesn't mean the other person wasn't the fastest. That just means that they weren't the fastest ever. But the statement doesn't say that Gara in this example was the fastest ever or the strongest ever. They say he was the strongest at the time. Now, again, Trini just got his head beaten. He wasn't actually understanding the argument. He tried filibustering and bringing up how, oh, well, uh, I'm disagreeing with the soundness of your argument, noise validity. That has nothing to do with the argument Draco is making. Draco even formalized the argument. Now, you know, critiquing Trini's argument is one thing, but you really need to get down to the core of the issue and talk about why is Trini known as good anyway, right? What is the sort of thing that Trini was doing that none of the other debaters were doing, you know, that made them think Trini was really good, but none of the other debaters were it too. So, you mean, I mean, one of the first things is just the fact that he knew a little bit about philosophy. So, again, these were the times where if you ask someone to make it to like, um, 
what a valid argument was they'd say oh you're ratting you're being a nerd right because they typically they just didn't understand what those terms meant so when they met something where they didn't understand the terms they didn't understand the terminology typically their brains would just shut off they would not actually try and engage in the substance anymore because they consider something foreign it's like they consider any sort of you know reputation that is given that they don't have any sort of knowledge on they consider it a sort of foreign attack an attack onto their ideology right but yeah quite literally it's just like because of that and because of the fact that <laughs> plutus is a troll but because of the fact that they consider you know any sort of terms that they don't know about as writing trini you know he had to he eased them into it so when it comes from a guy who usually debates fiction now he's using all of this philosophical terminology everyone already had some form of respect for trini so his usage of philosophical terminology you know he really you know Alex Windows, he eased them into the fact that they were idiots, right? Okay, so you know, whenever like say someone like Jade, right, said or Jade or start talking about propositional logic in a debate against the error flame, right? Obviously, everyone will be like, haha, why is this guy right now? Ha, huh, error's rhetoric is so good, man. Error's so convincing. I'm being convinced already. My convincing juices are flowing outside of me. It's like, no, right. But if someone like Trini did it, right, someone who's already an established figure, you know, they don't want this guy, you know, changing the status quo. They don't want someone like Jay changing the status quo. So people really would never consider Jay to be better than Trini, right? But, you know, someone like uh, Trini, who's already been an established figure, they're, you know, way more receptive to listening to him than listening to Jay. Jay was a kid, right? But again, because of the fact that, you know, they were all just really slow, really stupid back then, Trini introducing this new topic, this new, you know, aspect of debating that they were never familiar with, it sort of changed the quote-unquote meta of debating back then, you know, they went from just sending scans out, doing the odd equal interpretation, then just basically instead of actually engaging in substance, being like, oh, well, who has the most scans that they can talk about, right, who has the most, um, and I mean, I saw someone genuinely say this in an error debate. They said he lost argumentatively, but won the debate because he was better rhetorically. And it's like, what does that even mean? Do you mean he made worse arguments, but and his arguments didn't actually go through, but because he can quote unquote convinced you more because of his rhetoric, therefore he won? That's so arbitrary, so stupid, so slow. But in terms of Trini now, Trini, you know, he sort of was the guy who was supposed to combine rhetoric and argumentation and make himself look like the best. And because of his philosophical knowledge, everyone was like, oh my God, this guy's really good. This guy's the best. And it's like, no. Right. So again, in terms of rhetoric, Trini what they didn't really excel. So maybe I'm missing something. But in terms of rhetoric, whenever Trini, you see Trini debating Draco, he's like yelling out thug. This is basically because Trini is white, so I can't even say thug rhetoric. But this is basically white thug rhetoric, where he's like, "Oh my goodness, haha, your mama, haha, your auntie, haha, your uncle." It's like you usually if somebody said that in this current day and age. Everyone would laugh at them, right? However, you know, what's it called? If, what's it, if you know, if back then, they, they would look up to Trini like he was Jesus. They would look up to Trini like he was one of the best, right? Even though, in terms of rhetoric, he was really lackluster. He wasn't portraying his arguments in such a way in which it was convincing. Trini was the type of debater who would just start yelling out philosophical terms, but it wouldn't actually have anything to do with the argument. And then, you also have the issue of Glazers, this syndicate. These were the original syndicate. Imagine Generation Zero from Lookism. These were the original Generation Zero. They were the guys who were hyping up Trini making everyone think Trini was good, making everyone think Trini was the best. But in fact, Trini wasn't even the best. It wasn't even close, really, right? Now, look, I'm not going to use this to say that, oh, yeah, well, there were people in this time who could compete with them. Because really, there were actually people in this time who could compete with them. Trini, in a sense, was beyond his time. So in that sense, he was beyond his time in the sense that in current terms in current day terms he would be a tier five however in the past because of the fact that he knew stuff that nobody back then knew right because of the fact that he was way more intelligent due to like reading at least more than one philosophy paper right because of that he was kind of way beyond his time and because of the fact that he was way beyond his time everyone respected him 
Everyone looked up to him. Everyone thought he was really good. That's why whenever I go and I say, oh, Trini isn't really good. Draco isn't really good. Arrow isn't really good. Instead of actually, and usually this is the sort of critique that I'll pose to the people who think that they're really good. I'll ask, okay, can you name me three Two or even one argument that he's made that has even like a good or high level in terms of skill. And they are actually able to name me one, you know. And the reason why they can't name me one is simply because of the fact that they don't actually know any sort of good arguments he's making. None of the arguments he's making are really convincing. None of the arguments he's making really have any sort of high level in terms of substance. Genuinely, I think Infinity could compete with these guys in terms of substance, in terms of argumentation. And probably even in terms of rhetoric too. Like, I need to ask these sort of people, what is the sort of thing that Trini does that someone like, let's say a mid-tier like Makima doesn't do, a mid-tier like, uh, a mid-tier like BB Reborn doesn't do, a mid-tier like Jester doesn't do, what do they do, right, that Jester doesn't do? It's like, yes, okay, maybe they know a little bit more philosophy than them, but if you sit Trini and Jester in the same room on a neutral topic, would Jester really lose, right? Typically, I see all of these guys here at Trini, they consistently have Trini in the top of tier one and then i ask them okay well who is trini b they say trini is beating seth and then i'm like okay who is seth b they say um um he beat error but then they have error in tier four on the same list so it's like okay what what is he really done right what these sort of feats what these sort of like um performances that you can see lend credence to the fact that he is actually tier one and i don't actually see these feats you know what i mean i don't see anything now people think that error and seth could be destiny but it's like really how how could they do it what would they do what sort of weapon would they use to actually defeat destiny like what sort of argumentative skill what do they excel in beyond destiny and the answer is nothing really they don't excel in anything typically and you know it's fine because because the competition that they were facing, and this is something that Perfect has sold me. So it's like the competition they were facing is really bad. But relative to their competition, now imagine this is like compared Trini to the average debater back then. The gap between Trini and the average debater back then is bigger than the average debate uh, the gap between me and the average debater now. But it's like okay fine maybe i can grant that because i think the average debater back then was really 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 stupid right so is that really a bad thing i've seen this analogy from like someone like perfect he told me it's like compare napoleon to like um you know you, you know the guy who you know ran world war ii or compare him to like some other world leader like genghis khan right compare genghis khan to trump or biden right now you could say that trump or biden if they went to war with genghis khan genghis khan would probably lose right well obviously he'd lose but that doesn't mean he's a worse general because compared to his competition he was dominating way more than compared to i am compared to the competition i'm having but if we want to talk in terms of well, well, who's a better debater that isn't something that you can merely determine by oh who is way much who is better compared to the people they are facing and again even if we want to talk about in terms of comparisons between oh well how good are you compared to the people now compared to him and the you know him and the people then right it's like okay well you have to factor in who who who's the competition here now you see people who are goons mason apollo Sinta right you see people even the average pizza like nightclub right i think if probably if you put nightclub back then put send nightclub back three years right put him in um put him in uh what's it called one of the servers then put him in uni seven put him in a parrot server put him in noodle server everyone's going to always think that he's a really good debater and the reason is is because he knows way more than everyone like nightclub probably knows way more than trini so if you really think about it whenever you want to do these sort of debate comparisons you really need to think to yourself oh how good is this person what sort of feats do i have to say this person are good you know you know you know what i mean like i don't really how do i explain this hmm i don't really know why do people think trini is good because like really deep it though most of the people who think trini is good do they have recordings of trini and the answer is typically no they don't actually have any recordings of trini debating they typically are just you know 
you know, I'm saying Trini is really good based off of law. And it's like, is that really, a, I thought we were, you know, getting rid of, we were getting over with the syndicates. Are you telling me that you're any better than any of the syndicate leaders or the syndicate members? You're better than any of the average goons? If you're just going to accept that this guy is good without actually seeing him debate, without actually being able to name any good arguments he's made, you're just going to accept he's good simply because of the fact that he's really considered as good. That just shows me that most of these guys, they don't really, you know, like endorse endorsing in free thinking they don't really like endorsing in actually critical thinking because instead what they'd rather do is just sit there and see oh well everyone has him in tier two uh, or tier one so it would make no sense if i don't have him in tier one right now i've decided and i place trini where i think he is right and now if i pull up my debate tier list give me a second mm -hmm. we kicked it shoddy was sweeter than she was sweeter than cinnamon yeah, look, so I have Trini in high tier 4. I have set them para. Actually, no, to be fair, I should switch Trini and para because Trini did win their debate. Para said something like knowledge is just the act of knowing things. And it's like, wow, well, very informative, para. Yeah, very, like, a very high intelligence guy. It's like, there's no way these are the guys people used to consider as really good. It's like, no, he isn't good at fiction. No, he isn't good at philosophy. <gasps> Oh my god, he isn't good at philosophy. He isn't good at anything really. So these guys they're like neither of these guys they're very well read. Um the reason why Seth is above training for me personally is when they debated the neutral topic, right? Seth literally mid diff the guy, so it seems as if that the re the thing that was really distinguishing Trini from these guys wasn't actually any sort of argumentative skill that he had, rather it was simply just because of the fact that he read more than them, and it's like, okay, well, I could read more, like, literally, if everyone there weren't just so lazy and so lackluster, lacked ambition, right, again, any of them could read, it, like, or go on fill papers for two seconds and start reading, right, and most of them would probably immediately beat up Trini and Seth, right, and Paris right so it's like and in fact you look at seth too right we, we you put seth in like um you put seth in a veganism server you see him debating veganism and yes he's running through all of the bums but the sort of arguments that he's giving are completely lackluster you wouldn't expect the average tier four to start saying that oh yeah no the reason why it is okay for me to eat meat and not out uh, and or eat animals and not humans even though there's no distinction is due to cultural relativism it's like bro stop talking jesus like oh my goodness the arguments are just so lackluster from those people so again look maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm confused so i'm actually going to produce in an open mind you know as i always do so if anyone thinks that trini and seth are good they think trini and seth are great they think trini and seth could compete with the average debater of current day if you want are you able to provide me a recording of them doing something that is impressive argumentative wise. Of them debating somebody who is high level argumentative wise. And I don't think most people can do that. This has been Shenra. This has been my third video. And I'm out.